guys with another tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to make a digital clock in DaVinci Resolve 16. So let's get started. As you can see I'm in DaVinci Resolve 16 now. I've already imported a background which will be using it later on. First thing I will add is a fusion clip in the media pool. Right click, new fusion composition. Change the duration to 20. and hit create. With the fusion clip created I will add it to the timeline. Now I move to the fusion part of DaVinci. The first thing we will do here is do some arrangements. Also right click here options and orthogonal pipes. We will also change the arrange tools to grid. Now the first thing we will uh, design is the background of the digital clock. So I will drag a background here with the background selected, hit Control Space, search for rectangle. We'll edit the rectangle first, select the rectangle, and I will change the width, the height, and the corner radius. Selecting the background node and hitting number two. Then select the rectangle node and hit number one. Now let's go and change the settings for the rectangle. Make sure that you have selected the rectangle node. Okay, now we, as you can see, we just got a nice rounded rectangle. Then we will add the drop shadow select the background node control space drop shadow and we will edit some settings on the drop shadow select the drop shadow we will change the settings for the shadow strength the drop angle the drop distance and the blur now select the drop shadow and hit it number two to see it appear here as as you notice, the drop shadow is added to the background. And now we are done with the background. Now we need to add the digital clock. To be able to add the digital clock, you will need to go to this link, which I will put it in the description of the video. What you need to do is copy this code over here, select all of it, and right click to copy or hit copy here. I will go with right click and copy and move back to the DaVinci Resolve. Right click whenever you want in this area, blank notes area, and hit paste. And now the digital clock is added. Now to explain you real quick, let me move to the page again. The important thing, the important parts of this code, which is written in the Lua programming language, are the width and the height. Since I'm, I will be making a full HD video. I'm writing 1920 for the width and 1080 for the height. I'm using the agency FB font which is bold. And this is the part that activates and makes this text plus control programmable. And this is the ID of the text plus control. This is the part of the code that displays the, the current time in the text plus control. Now let me go back to the DaVinci Resolve, select the digital clock, this icon here shows us that this control is programmable. Now if we go to this tab over here where you see this red dot, select it and here's the code. Digital clock is the ID of the text plus. Now we need to do some changes on the digital clock. I will change the color, move back to this tab, select yellow or green color, I will select yellow. And I will change the size of it, the tracking. Now the next thing we need to do is add a glow node to the digital clock. So I will select the digital clock, control space, and search for glow. I will you need, make sure you select the second glow here. And we need to play with the settings over here. Select output will be glowing image and we'll change these other settings. Now we move down to the opacity. 
and change the blend. Now if I select the glow node and hit number two, you will see those this vertical lines, vertical glowy lines. One property that I will show you is HV ratio. If I move it to the right, we will get horizontal lines, but I like to go with the vertical lines. So I will move it to the left, give it minus one. One last thing I will do here is to make this vertical glowy lines move randomly. So I will select this property, right click on it, modify width and select shake. And as the animation plays, these lines will move randomly with the shake animation. And now we are done with this part too. Let me move these nodes and I will connect the text and the background. Select on this edge here and connect it to the drop shadow. Finally connect the merge to the media out node and select two. Now we have the full digital clock here with the background. Now what we need to do here is to go to playback, render cache and I will select smart and we will render out only this part of this animation. We will render the output channel or output alpha channel or export the alpha because we want this movie to be transparent as we will add the background later on. The reason why I'm dividing this, why I'm just rendering this part is that I will, I will save up on rendering time and on rendering processing because the background image over here is of a high resolution and it can cause the application to crash. These are the settings I will select. I will go to the individual clip, select quick time. We'll check export alpha here and add it to the render queue. Start rendering. And now the rendering is finished. I'm going to go to the edit page again. I will import what we just exported, what we just rendered. Import media. Select the folder and this is what we exported. And first I will delete this fusion composition. I will go and select the background first, add it to the timeline, and then I will add the movie, the transparent movie we just rendered. We can delete the audio because we don't need it. Let us change the duration of this of the background to match the duration of the clip we just exported and I would like to zoom the background here to fit on the screen and this is what we got so far. As you can see these vertical glowy lines are moving. Turn this to a new compound clip. What we are going to add here is add a slow zoom in effect for the whole clip. So I'm in the frame one. I will add a keyframe here and then we'll go to the last frame, select the composition, add a keyframe and increase the zoom. And now if we play the animation, this is what we got. Now I would also like to show you that in the link I gave you before if you Go scroll down and click on this link over here. You will you can learn more about how to use the OS date parameters. So if you use these parameters here, you will get different results. And guys, before you leave, I would suggest you to check one of my other DaVinci Resolve videos in the card above. I'm also planning to make more DaVinci Resolve videos, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified whenever I put a new video. And hopefully guys you liked it, leave your comments, your questions or anything else on the comment section below. And with you guys, I see you next time. Bye.